My name is John Poe, and I'm a biology major at Western Oregon University, and I'm going to share a brief tutorial on the biosynthesis and metabolic pathways of steroid hormones. To begin, I'd like to share a brief overview of what a steroid is and also what a steroid hormone is. A steroid is a type of organic compound that contains a characteristic range of four cycloalkane rings, as seen in this compound, and this composes 17 carbon atoms. Steroid hormones are steroids that function as powerful signal molecules which regulate a host of organismal functions. There are five major hormone classes, all derived from the steroid cholesterol. These include progestogens, glucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, androgens, and estrogens. The five hormone classes, all derived from cholesterol, have distinct functions. Progestogens function in maintaining pregnancy. Glucocorticoids promote gluconeogenesis and glycogen formation, fat and protein degradation, and inflammatory response inhibition. Mineral corticoids influence salt and water balances through an increase in sodium reabsorption and excretion of potassium and hydrogen ions. This results in, in an increase in blood volume and pressure. Androgens are responsible for the development and maintenance of male secondary characteristics, while estrogens are responsible for the development of female secondary sexual characteristics. In order to understand steroid hormone biosynthesis, it is crucial to talk about the fundamental lipid cholesterol as seen here. Cholesterol is an important biological molecule that functions as the precursor to the five classes of steroid hormones as well as playing a role in membrane structure. It is a steroid that is a natural product derived from the fundamental steroid core and can be, and can be obtained from the diet or synthesized within the body. It is important to note that slightly less than half of the cholesterol in the body is derived through its biosynthesis. This makes the consumption of dietary cholesterol important in order to, to perform a variety of bodily functions. All 27 carbon atoms in cholesterol derive from acetyl-CoA in a three-stage synthetic process. Cholesterol biosynthesis is complexly regulated and is tightly controlled at several levels. We will now take a look at the synthesis of one molecule of cholesterol. This synthesis consists of three stages. The first stage of synthesis of cholesterol is the formation of isopentanyl pyrophosphate from acetyl-CoA. A set of reactions start with the formation of 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutaryl-CoA, this molecule right here, from acetyl-CoA and acetoacetyl-CoA. This intermediate is then reduced to mevalonate for the synthesis of cholesterol. The synthesis of mevalonate is a committed step in the cholesterol formation. Mevalonate is converted into 3-isopentanyl pyrophosphate in three consecutive reactions requiring ATP. In the last step, the release of CO2 yields isopentanyl pyrophosphate. This activated isoprene unit is a key building block for many important biomolecules throughout the kingdoms of life. Things derived from isoprene include vitamin A, also known as retinol, vitamin E, and the carotenes. Upon the formation of isopentanyl pyrophosphate in stage 1 of cholesterol synthesis, stage 2 begins. Squalene is synthesized from a reaction sequence consisting of six molecules of isopentanyl pyrophosphate. This stage in the synthesis of cholesterol starts with the isomerization of isopentanyl pyrophosphate to dimethyl pyrophosphate. These two isomeric compounds condense to form a C10 compound. The squalene synthesis involving one molecule of dimethyl pyrophosphate and two molecules of isopentanyl pyrophosphate form farnesyl pyrophosphate. The tail-to-tail -to -tail coupling of two molecules of farnesyl pyrophosphate yields squalene to end the stage 2 synthesis in cholesterol. The final stage of cholesterol biosynthesis starts with the cyclization of squalene. The formation of the steroid nucleus from squalene begins with the formation of squalene epoxide. This intermediate is protonated to form a tetracyclic structure which rearranges to form the compound lan lanosterol. Lenosterol is converted into cholesterol in a multi-step process by the removal of three methyl groups seen in blue, the reduction of one double bond by NADPH, this bond right here, and the migration of one other double bond, as seen in red. The conversion of lanoesterol into cholesterol is a highly complex process that involves 19 steps. With the precursor steroid cholesterol, natural steroid hormones can be synthesized through further reactions. Here is an example of the synthesis of various adrenal steroid hormones from, chole from cholesterol. There are four pathways that produce four different hormones. This compound here, cortisol, is a glucocorticoid that increases blood sugar through gluconeogenesis. This hormone right here is, a co is corticosterone. It has functions in regulating fuel and stress responses throughout the body. This hormone, aldosterone, is a mineral corticoid and it regulates blood pressure at the level of the kidneys. 
This last hormone, androstenedione, is an intermediate to the androgens testosterone and estrogens estrone and estradiol. Steroidogenesis does not stop with the production of just these adrenal steroid hormones. There are many more outcomes to steroidogenesis. As seen in this diagram, there are many other pathways that can be taken by cholesterol in order to perform many different functions. One of the hormones of interest is testosterone. Testosterone is the primary male sex hormone. It is manufactured by the Leydig cells in the testes at varying amounts throughout the person's lifespan. Increased, produ increased testosterone production will, will cause growth-promoting or anabolic changes in the body, including enhanced rate of protein synthesis leading to muscle accumulation. Testosterone is the reason males carry more muscle mass than women, as the two sexes have vastly contrasting amounts of this hormone. Based on the ability of steroid hormones to produce the desired effects, a variety of synthetic steroid hormones have also been produced that perform similar functions to the naturally synthesized forms. Synthetic androgens, also known as anabolic steroids, are structurally related to the steroid testosterone. The synthetic testosterone derivatives have two different but overlapping types of effects. They promote, they promote cell growth, also known as anabolic effects, and they affect the development and maintenance of masculine characteristics, also known as androgenic effects. Synthetic and natural testosterone binds with a cellular target in order to exert its activity, and will therefore affect only those body cells that possess the proper hormone receptor site, specifically androgen receptors. Once bound on the cytosol, the receptor complex can migrate to the cell's nucleus. When the testosterone complex is within the nucleus, it can attach to the cell's DNA in specific regions to perform specific functions and start promoting the expressions of certain genes. Such different functions can include hair growth, balding, serum production, such things as male sexual organ growth like penile growth, prostate growth and function, increased strength and muscle volume, stimulation of, of erythropoietin production, and stimulation of stem cells, among other things. Because of all the beneficial anabolic effects testosterone has to offer, it has been aggressively abused by athletes worldwide. A notable case of anabolic steroid abuse is that of Alex Rodriguez. This Major League Baseball superstar was caught multiple times abusing these steroids, including pure synthetic testosterone, as well as a testosterone derivative, promobilin. The effects of these anabolic steroids were easily noticeable in his overall muscle mass and performance, giving him a strong advantage over his competitors. Steroid hormones have many beneficial effects and are all a consequence of the precursor cholesterol. In summary, cholesterol is an extremely important molecule for the synthesis of steroid hormones and can be obtained through dietary means or can be synthesized through a three-stage process. With a precursor molecule of cholesterol, a variety of hormones can be synthesized that perform a variety of functions throughout the body. Synthetic steroid hormones can perform similar functions to their naturally occurring counterparts and can also serve many other direct functions based on their derivatives. Many synthetic steroids are continually being used for performance enhancements, such as testosterone and its abundant amount of derivatives. I'd like to thank you very much for viewing my presentation, and I hope you took away some knowledge about the synthesis and utilization of steroid hormones throughout the body.